Welcome back everyone to another incredible episode of Chat with Dan. Now before we start, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to check this out. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow, it helps a lot, and again thank you. Have an incredible day or evening depending where you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe. So welcome back everyone to another fantastic episode of Chat with Dan. For today, we have on the show the incredible, the amazing, the badass, the super, the epic, Alana. Alana, how are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. I mean, what better way to continue an epic week with an epic guest, right? I didn't. I don't think anyone's ever called me badass. I like it though. Absolutely. Feels also, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. Now, before before we started with this episode, I do want to thank those who are watching this or listen to it. Thank you so much. If this is your first episode, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, follow. It helps a lot. If it is your fifth one, sixth one, thank you so much. It means a lot that you're watching this. Uh, make sure to keep watching them and spread them. And uh, now moving to the whole interview. For those who don't know who is the incredible, amazing, badass Alana, please tell us who you are. Uh, my name is uh, Alana Dunkelman. I am a Canadian uh, voice and on-camera performer. Uh, I'm going to be in uh, uh, some episodes on a really cool show called Alert on Fox. Uh, it's on Mondays, and uh, it's a it's a really interesting procedural cop show that takes place in Philadelphia and it's about um a department in uh um a department that is basically helps find missing people and every week there's like a missing person and then there's also an overarching missing person story so I'm excited to be a part of it it's been very well received so far that's incredible I love it which we will be talking about that but first let's go back in time here a little bit and tell me where the journey began? Like what, where does this passion for acting started? I started acting uh, when I was 11 and I was in a, a, a musical called Oliver and uh, okay. I stepped on stage as a, a little orphan uh, and I just absolutely adored it. It was like nothing that I've ever experienced. And I, I kept doing it as I got older. I was doing, I, I did the plays in high school. And then when it, when I graduated from high school in Montreal, uh, Quebec, I didn't really have any sort of passion for anything else. And my parents surprisingly were very supportive and I decided to go to theater school and, and uh, I kept going from there. And, and I've been very, very fortunate that I've been able to work in the industry. That's incredible. And also the fact that you got like that support, you know, because, it, that was huge, huge, yeah, huge. absolutely. Because like it, it, it is rare for that to happen. You know, I remember back, back in high school when I told my parents that I want to become a DJ, they almost kicked me out of the house, you know? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but that's a cool, that's a cool, but tell me, so time went by, you started to, you know, making your first acting steps here and there, but what were some of the challenges that you encountered when you were making those first steps on building your acting career? I think it was shifting from uh, theater to on camera. I think the the now, as I've kind of um, learned and grown as a performer, I feel as if the the process is very similar, but this yeah. the the style, like that the process of looking at the script and breaking down a character, uh, you can apply the same sort of techniques. It's more just the style of acting. And I didn't really have any on-camera experience. So it was shifting from doing stage plays, which, um, you know, you're, you're projecting out into the audience. There's a certain dynamic um, to on-camera, which is just most of the time, just a conversation between two people, which the camera happens to be picking up. So it was, uh, it was, I mean, I, I still, like, I'm a theater kid. So like, I get loud and sometimes I need to remind myself to be more natural, but uh, that was probably the the biggest shift and also just like just learning about the industry I think mm -hmm. when you're just being exposed to it for the first time that so much is happening and just learning who to talk to you and who to 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 go to when you have questions um it, it was there was definitely a big learning curve when I when I entered into the industry yeah absolutely I mean it it's inevitable right when you are making when you're starting something new and you're making mm -hmm. those steps that you will encounter this type of situations or also that along the way you were making some mistakes, let's say here and there, oh, you know, 
hundred percent part of the ride. I love it. I yeah. love it. And those are usually the best learning experiences. Oh yeah. 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 And, and, and also like fun ones later on, you know what I mean? Like that perhaps, oh, yeah. like perhaps in that moment weren't that much fun, but then later on, it's a fun, it's a funny story. So who knows? Yes. Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, most of my mistakes are captured on camera. And then I look back and think, what was I doing? And then you just try to get better from there. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Incredible. And focusing like a little bit on your acting career, tell me how you prepare a character. Well, now you understand, of course, that depends on the role. But what is your initial approach when you are about to dive in into this character creation process? Um, For on camera, so like a TV or a movie. Um, So I'm going to start from the very, like, I get the email from my agent. Hmm. Uh, there's usually a script attached, which, um, it's like a, like a couple of scenes usually from the project. And then there'll be, uh, some description about the character. So, uh, I'm a text-based person, so I'll really read everything that I can, make sure that I understand the, the genre that we're in. Are we in a romantic comedy? Are we in a horror? Does this show exist? Does it not exist? Um, really trying to feel what the world is that we're in mm -hmm. um and then obviously reading about the character and what sort of qualities they have um hopefully they're ones that uh I've experienced and if not then that's really exciting that I can try to you know dig into something that maybe isn't something natural to me mm -hmm. and then I'll read the script as many times as I can and really try to understand what the circumstances are what the relationships are between the characters um I, I I really subscribe to um, breaking down the text and really understanding what the character wants mm. uh, from the other character uh, that they're talking to and um, not playing emotions, but more playing what I want. So like what what yeah. is what is the character doing to the other character? Because those are more playable things than emotions. Um And then memorize, 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 memorize as much as I possibly can. And then uh, the hardest part of acting is actually forgetting that you know the script. And that is something that everybody, you know, strives strives for. Yeah. Um, so that's just like being as prepared as possible and then forgetting that you're prepared and looking at the person that you're acting with and just allowing the scene to happen without pushing the mm. all the work that you've done because it's already in you uh and then like beyond that it's like emotionally preparing and really connecting with this the scenario and making sure you understand everything so that's basically like just a simplistic version of my process absolutely and has it ever happened to you that along that process it took you more than usual or There was something about that character that was just stuck to it or got you stressed. Like how you like has it ever happened that to you? Uh yeah. Uh sometimes I have trouble with like for me, like I, I don't I, I find anger or like I don't want to say emotions, but like if we're gonna yeah. just talk about it like on a surface level, like um more explosive or angry mm. emotions are hard for me I can totally get there but like it's not as um it's not as natural for me I think like I'm more like you know cover things with like a smile um so I think there was um it, it was two two things that was a, a bit more difficult to prepare one was that it was uh It was, it was, I don't know if you've ever heard of Murdoch Mysteries. It's like a show that's been mm -hmm. going on for years in Canada. It's very popular internationally. So I was um, auditioning for a character that, uh, spoiler alert, although this show's been out for, my episode's been out for years. So okay. if you haven't seen it, too bad. Uh, so I end up being the murderer and I murder my husband. But uh, so there's that, that like, that impulse to kill someone which i find not natural for me yeah, of course, <laughs> and, of course. Yeah, absolutely. And on top of that um uh the character also spoke another language uh so she she was um a jewish woman from europe and she she was trying to find her husband so she came uh, she followed him to canada because he was he was cheating on her And uh, I actually learned Yiddish growing up, and uh, okay. it, it was. But I've never acted in Yiddish, so it was like an interesting, mm. like double prep where I had to like 
speak in that language and then also had murder someone. So, but I ended up booking it. So that was great. There you go. I love it. And now that you mentioned like the whole uh, speaking in another language, how like, or perhaps like an accent sometimes might happen. Like how you, like, what is your process when you need to learn into either another language or another accent? I, I speak to someone who actually knows the the language or or mm -hmm. speaks in English with that accent mm -hmm. um I, I sometimes ones like come like I can hear it and I can pick it up really easily and then sometimes not I have so much trouble not that I've ever been asked to but just you know you kind of list it and then you like you know you play around but like New Zealand and Australian accents I have so much trouble with mm -hmm. um but I think like there's there's so much online there's so many resources online that uh, I, sometimes they're good and sometimes they're bad so I think it like depends on who you're looking to but like on YouTube there's tons of people speaking in English in their own accent which can be helpful for actors looking for a resource yeah. um, or you can try to find someone speaking like their own language and then really listening and, and making sure you're getting the sounds so um, uh, but I think more and more like when you're when there's casting involved they're really trying to find the people who who do actually speak the language so it's I, I don't think it's going to be as much of uh something that younger actors are going to be taking on I think they're really trying to find people who really are those things yeah yeah absolutely it's, uh, yeah. it's it's an interesting world that we're that we're going into it's exciting yeah yeah and, and you can see that more uh, yeah like you can see that read like more recently you know that for example I mean, if it is like a French show, they will search French actors or if it is an Oregon one, you know, as back then, I remember that sometimes we will watch this film in Rome and everybody speaks perfectly English. You're like, OK, yeah, yeah it's you it's know? it's uh, yeah, it's, I think things are changing, which is cool, yeah, which is really cool. And, and also it gives opportunity to more local people, you know what I mean, which I find that pretty cool. The fact that they can give uh, stage to to new to new actors, you know, so cool. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. Now, yeah. like, what is your, like, my, my next question here is, like, what is your goal when you're performing? Like, what is the thing you want to achieve when you are presenting the character uh, to the audience? Um, I think when I, when I'm actually performing, I'm not really thinking about the audience. I'm more thinking about the, the person I'm acting with. So I, uh, it kind of takes the pressure off of you when you're like, I'm not even going to worry about what I'm doing. I'm I'm thinking no. about affecting the other person. So it's really focusing and like either like if if let's say you're caring for someone or you're trying to uplift someone like really focusing and making sure that that's happening to them um or you know maybe like more negative things like you know uh, um putting someone down or like mm. uh not that I would want to do that for real but like in a scene yeah, um course. To me, that's that is the most important thing is affecting the other person in the scene, uh, because that's that's your goal. That's mm -hmm. as as the character. Um, now, when I'm watching the audition or when I'm watching something that I've filmed, uh, as an as a viewer, I'm hoping that it it's coming off natural. Depending on the style, obviously, like if we're in if we're in a sitcom, it's very different than yeah, you know. Like a, a police drama, but hopefully not not coming off out of style. Mm. So fitting into the world that you're in. So is that natural or is that like kooky comedy? So just you know that you're that you fit in and then it, that it feels right for that moment. Okay, okay. And let's say that one day I call you and I tell you that I want to become an actor. Now. I don't have zero experience, like none. So based on what you know, what advice would you think would be important for me to know before starting diving in into this whole acting career? First of all, I think anyone can be an actor. Um, I think it's, I think anyone can be an actor. Not everyone wants to be an actor, which is totally fine. Um, but I, I've met a lot of people where they're very dismissive of their self of like, oh, I can never do that. So first of all, like it's wanting to be an actor. Yeah. Um, and I, I think if you're starting from absolutely zero, I think it's finding a, a really great coach that 
you that you can actually like okay so the thing about coaches is that yeah. I find sometimes people will go to a coach and they'll go for a very long time but they won't learn any technique mm -hmm. and uh the coach will maybe direct them into a performance and they do a beautiful performance but they don't know how they did it so to me a really good coach helps you get there, but learn, like you learn how to do it. So eventually you can say, thank you so much. I'm going to do it on my own now. So that when you have your, an audition or you get to set, like you don't need to be like desperately calling your coach, like, oh my God, I don't know how to do it. Like, you know what to do. Mm. And I had a really great coach that uh, taught me that. And um, he's based in Vancouver. I'll plug him. His name is Matthew Harrison out of the Actors Foundry. He completely changed my approach to acting, um, which gives me that confidence because it's like, I know I know what to do. Um, and I think when you don't know what to do, it can kind of feel like a little like spastic. Um, so I think it's finding a really good coach that you respect and, uh, you know, really gives you a craft. Mm. And then practice, 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 practice as much as you can watch your self tapes, watch yourself on camera. So that like, is, are your moments real? If they're not tape it again, like figure out how to do it. Um, watch movies, watch TV shows, watch things from other parts of the world, fill yourself with creativity. So is that like, you know, doing something other than acting? Is that doing stand up? Is that singing? Is that doing, you know, a, like playing an instrument, I think just mm. like filling your life with creativity is so important so that you have more to draw on. Well, I mean, like, obviously, like enjoying life, but you know, that you have more to draw on from your life experience. Because if, if you don't do anything, then you're not going to be a vibrant, full person. So I, I think, I think that's like really important as a performer. There you go. If I ever become an actor, at some point, I will win an Oscar for best actor. And I will be mentioning you in my thank you speech. Oh, thank you. Gotcha. <laughs> of course. I love it. Now, let's say that one yeah. day Netflix, HBO Max, Disney Plus, you name it, they call you and they tell you that, that they have this idea, which goes that all of the characters you have played at the moment, they're all going to gather to celebrate your birthday. So how would you wow. call this film? Like even the ones from like when I did like video games or animated series or whatever? All of them since day one. Oh my gosh since day one like I feel the, like it would be like a scene out of Alice in Wonderland like like the Mad Hatter it would be like Alana's Mad Hatter tea party like something like that awesome. it, should, it would just be kooky and 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 nuts so mm, mm. <laughs> I like played it. a lot of weird characters for cartoons <laughs> which that would be cool you know there was this you know there was this movie but I I just keep forgetting the name that I mean it's an old one that there were live like like live actors and animated ones the same one you know it's a very old one but I just keep oh uh who framed Roger Rabbit yeah that one so perhaps like something like that would be yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. oh that would be really cool actually that would be really fun would you be should rewatch that movie because it first of all it's fantastic and it totally holds up like it's yeah. wonderful yeah. wonderful movie yeah so you know the thing was when I watched that movie I was like ten. Was and it I was scary a as a ten-year-old? No, but I didn't. I didn't understand anything of it. Me too. But then when you watch it as an adult, you're like, oh, yeah, that's it has, what they were doing. Uh, I had more sense. Like with yeah. the with the the streetcars and and getting rid of the streetcars and the the highways and stuff. If if you if the viewers at home have not seen this and you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch it. It's an amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Movie. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I, I remember watching it because my parents they they thought that it was an animated one. You know, cartoons oh, and everything. No. So they were like, yeah, just watch it. But I did not understand anything, any of it. But then later on, I was like, a lot of minute. politics. It's like, there's like politics. Yeah, in it. yeah. Like once you see it, like more grown up, you're like, oh, oh makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, yeah. Also, uh, with this video game uh, called Conquer, Conquer Bad for Day, you know, it was a uh, Nintendo 64 one. It's a very old one, but it, it's a very mature one, like a very mature video game. So when I, when I played it, I was like, also like 10, 9, something like that didn't understand anything it took me like later on when i re when i watched some of the whole gameplay stuff and i was laughing i was like oh okay now okay. that makes a lot more sense so yeah i can understand that sometimes you can watch material when you're a kid and you don't understand anything of it but there I know are songs from when like 
I was in like like elementary school yeah. that I listen to now that are like, whoa, those are explicit lyrics. They played those like for us when we were kids. That's uh yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and for example, here for example, here in Mexico, um, they will put, you know, sometimes in kids' parties or festivals from the school and things like that, they will put, you know, like the like the most pop tunes and things like that, you know, which they're cool because they sound cool. But if you learn the lyrics, you're like, oh crap, I can't buy, you know, like I can't believe they're actually putting that in the middle of this. But I mean, I, I get it. So it's funny. It, it's funny, like when, like whenever that happens. So it's hilarious. Trust me, it's hilarious. But anyway, uh, moving on here. If you could describe your whole your whole career, but on a drink, what like what that drink would have, and how would you call it? Uh, the quirky martini martini okay i'll take it and what would it have sorry yeah like like that martini what would it have like uh like what what would be the recipe for me uh for me to do it i'm just trying to think of like it would be like like a martini but mm -hmm. like instead of like an orange peel like i'm just trying to think of like a different type of fruit that it would like just make it kind of like tangier i don't know can you think of anything what about a, so uh... would it be like an orange or a pineapple Ooh, yeah, yeah. i like that yeah i'll take it sounds, i'll take it i drink that that sounds good yeah yeah and you know i'm i'm the, I'm, the, I'm the type of person that if i that if i see something interesting you know like a more visual type of uh type of guy so if you see something intrigue of interest i'm like okay i want to try it you know what i mean yeah I'll, Wow. Like it would be like, cause there's like, like not like with olive juice, cause that would be weird with pineapple. But like, yeah, absolutely. Like, like, like a, like I, it, I think it's called like a lemon drop martini. So mm -hmm. maybe it would be like that, but like a, like a pineapple drop martini. So it would yeah. be like very clean, but then like, like a, like a, like a funky little back end taste with the pineapple. There you go. I'll, I'll have I don't know. I don't drink very much. I don't. Know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even yeah, know, I know if that would taste good. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um. Now, what motivates you? You know, we all have those days that we just want to quit, you know, and yeah. uh, and I mean, it's inevitable, you know, that that will happen at some point or even perhaps or, or it will be like a longer time of period that you feel that you want to quit. So how you handle to remove, yeah, like silent all of those toxic uh, thoughts here and there and to continue being on this road that you have built for uh, so many years now? Okay, so I'm going to say two things. One, I absolutely have those days. Uh mm where I get really stressed out, yeah. you know, you go on Instagram, a friend of yours or like an acquaintance of yours book something and you're like, yeah. oh my God, when am I going to book something? And obviously yeah. I'm happy for them and I want everyone to work, but you know, there's that part of you that's like, ah, uh, so this is, the, so there's two things. One, uh, I will go and cry to my husband <laughs> and then he'll say, you're <laughs> silly and you're going to book something. And yeah. then- I kid you not, every time I do that, I book something like the next day. And then he's like, you're a dummy. <laughs> uh, and then when he's not around, um, I don't know, like, I, I don't really, it's not, I don't really, I don't want to be anything else. Mm. I, I don't know of any other job where I've, that you would get to do the things that I've gotten to do. Um, yeah. I love it. It's fun. Like I, I, I could come up with like, like a very, you know, deep reason why I want to be an actor. Like it's fun. It's fun to like be able to play different characters and do things that you would never get to do. And yes, like I want to inspire people and I want people to, you know, get in touch with their humanity, but like, I don't want to sit at a desk. I want to have fun and do auditions and play, you know, be in video games and be weird, quirky animated characters. Like who else would get to do that? So I think it's just reminding myself of the the love of of the job and mm. it, it like the, the the business side of acting is difficult. It can it can yeah. get very frustrating. There's a lot of stuff that's out of your control, but I I personally have been very lucky that I found things that have helped to fill my time, which is um I I write as well. So um uh, I'm writing. A, a movie with a friend of mine we're writing mm. partners and thankfully we found producers that are very excited about us and that's that's been great and I've learned some stuff from that and then uh I've I've been coaching actors as well for the past 
six years. And it's, I think like yeah. if you love the industry and you love acting, it's just finding ways to, 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 to involve yourself in the industry without hyper-focusing on acting. Absolutely. So it's just like, Absolutely. like loving it in everything that it is, which yeah. can be very hard, but it's just getting back up and, and trying again. Yeah. And that's, and that's like, that's like the whole thing, right? That whenever, I mean, it's difficult, of course, but I mean, I ended up also discovering that, for example, whenever I, I get those feelings too, that 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 I started to say that I I want to quit and everything. I mean, I, I once saw this video in which in which they were saying that that if you want to quit something that you love, then basically it's not for you. You know what I mean? Perhaps what is perhaps at, at that moment what is happening, it's more about that you're tired, you know, or that you're burnout you know or that you feel stress yeah. about uh, about like the whole thing but that's okay you know like those moments you can take up take a breather here and there you know regroup and then Absolutely. go back again you know because for example the same thing happens to me like whenever I, whenever i say that you know what i'm done you know i just want to quit this is it something something happens you know like something new happens and then something new happens and keep going keep going keep going and that's part of the whole experience i mean of course that it's going to be a little bit depressing at first but You know, I mean, as as you mentioned, I mean, if I'm going to feel depressed or if I'm going to feel desperate, it's better if, if it is on something that I love instead of something that I don't love at all. You know what I mean? Um, I've been told and I I really love this phrase is that it's especially in this um, as an actor or yeah. like any sort of creative endeavor or or it can be applied to anything is that like it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. There you go. So. I want to do this for the rest of my life and there'll be some good years and some bad years. And, Absolutely. and it's a very quick industry where, you know, at the end of last year, I hadn't like, I had a couple of bookings here and there. And then like the end of November hit and I was on alert for three episodes and like it came out of nowhere. And, mm -hmm. um, and it, it was very exciting and very fun but at the end of the year I was like oh okay it wasn't such a great year and then boom it was no. so it, it it things can change very quickly and I think it's really just about trying to in, enjoy the highs but learning how to deal with the lows so that mm. you're not like really discouraged and yeah. again filling your life with things other than acting so that you can enjoy the times that are great and also enjoy the times that are not as busy uh, because otherwise why why put yourself through the torture you can go work a nine to five and not worry so much yeah, absolutely yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah incredible but it's true i love it and for those who don't know also where like where we can see you you know let's say that uh that I want to see more about your whole projects here where have you been you know like where where can I watch you basically uh I have a website so um it's uh .com. thankfully no one else in the world is uh, I think there's an Alana Dunkelman though but she's a singer uh okay. very unusual name so uh I I grabbed the website um and you can find uh some photos there and uh, a lot of demo material so yeah. clips from different projects that i've been in my voice demos uh you can check out uh i think there's like a link if if you want you i have like a whole vimeo yeah. showcase of like all the things that i've been in um and then on instagram i think the the uh link should be there somewhere there in the description below it's be. Yeah. uh and then um Uh, so you can click there and and I'll I'll be posting updates as mm -hmm. I go. Uh, if you're interested in coaching, uh, uh, I, I, I really mostly have people in Canada, but if internationally, if you if you want to work with me, it's uh, Sumac Studios. Uh, so the website and as well as the Instagram page. And I've been a lot of my my uh, clients have been coaching or have been booking. So woot woot, uh, very happy for them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, that's about it. I mean, I, I, I don't really, I mean, you'll, you can see me on Fox, uh, in February, uh, and I'll be on, uh, uh, some, I think three episodes and you can check that out if you're interested. It's, uh, on Mondays. Uh, I, I don't remember the time. I think they keep changing it, but I think it might be 9 PM. I probably should have checked that out before I mentioned right. so, it. So, so, so if it is on nine, it's going to be 9 PM EST. 
EZT, eight, yes. 8 p.m. CST and then six, I got it right. It's nine, it's nine EST and eight CST. So and, there you go. And six PST, right? I think so. Yes, because yeah, right. they're three hours behind yeah, us. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Wow. What can I say? I mean, what can I say about your career? It's incredible. I love it. I mean, it's badass. As I said in the beginning, it's badass. We all know that. Yeah. Incredible. And also like the fact that you have uh developed so much. I like so much stuff, but also you are doing some coaching here. And uh, I mean, not not only locally, but internationally as well. Why not? I mean, it's incredible. It's amazing. And I'm super sure that uh, our next conversation is going to be about the multiple thousands of projects that you have been in because it's incredible what you do. I love it. I hope so. I hope so. I would love to be in thousands of projects. I don't know where my brain would go, though. I would think. <laughs> you know, that would be interesting. Like, like, what would happen if you play, let's say, in a span of, let's say, 20 years, you play five, 600 characters? I wonder what will happen. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I feel like I bring like a, like I try to bring myself to the, the yeah. characters that I play, but um, I think if you're like being pulled all over the place, sometimes your brain can get a bit frazzled. <laughs> so... yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, let's say like, like those 500 roles would be from very dramatic scenes. You know what I mean? Oh boy. Uh, I think you'd have to get a lot of therapy for sure. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Just absolutely. to deal with all of absolutely. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> uh but yeah i mean it's go yeah it's amazing what you do keep inspiring keep doing what you do because i'm super sure i mean of that, that that there are hundreds of people out there who sees you who sees you as a role model and some of them who sees you as someone who get things done and you're actually showing that dreams can be yeah that dreams can be possible of course there's this huge amount of huge amount of work that we that we will not know but the fact that you are still there and you're making it happen and you're and you'd be like you know what this is what i love so here it is you know it's incredible and i'm and, 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 and as i said before i mean i'm super sure that this this year is the opening for many incredible things to happen in the future. So. Thank you. And I, I think it's like really like for the people out there, I think it's really important to um, surround yourself with supportive people. And because yeah. I like I, I have an amazing network in in uh, in my community and my yeah. partner and my my family is very supportive. Um, I've been very lucky, but I in having that. But I, I think like being around people who are like minded and are there for you um, through the good times and bad times is so important. So um, I, I hope that I can be that to other people too. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, allies are essential. You know, you can't, you can't do things alone. I mean, it's, 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 okay. it's impossible. So um, yeah, it's incredible. And I also want to thank those who watch this. Thank you so, so much. If you are either also listening to it, thank you. Um, make sure, as I said, to follow, subscribe. It helps a lot. If it is your birthday, happy birthday. If it, if it is just a regular day, thank you so much for tuning into, into this episode. Now, because this episode is about to be done in the description below, you're going to see all the social media to Alana. So you're going to follow her on Instagram and let's make her viral. Hashtag Team Alana. She's incredible. She's amazing. <laughs> and um, again, thank you so much for making this happen. Have an incredible rest of the week. Keep inspiring. Keep creating. Keeping this, uh, this badass person you always are. And I'll see you in the next one.